hey, a million years ago, I did a talk show, and that's what you're gonna see, so enjoy. It's just short clips, but I think you'll dig it. not decide what to wear. I'm so glad you're wearing a sweater. Oh, yeah, this is it. This is it. They, get, they wanted to give us a wardrobe budget. Because they, they thought we were going to like go to designers. And... I mean, no, no. <laughs> you, you have to be you. I have to be ready on the floor. This is, this is it. Hello. Was it starting to stand up? <laughs> What are you giving it? It tickles me when she does that. Oh, this part of here? Yeah, she, she does this thing to give it height. <laughs> oh, that's that. that. Yeah. I'm sitting here with Elizabeth Taylor. Now, it, it is an amazing thing to me because you are a woman who has been what I've always considered a movie star but from almost birth. <laughs> you know, it, 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 do you ever get to the place where you wonder if you missed anything being a, a child star? Well, I was like in movies uh, at the age of nine, and I guess what you call a movie star at 12 after National Velvet. And I did miss out on all the, uh, like high school things and football games and proms and, your basic childhood. Yeah. Uh, my friends were all the guys on this set, really. These guys would love to be your friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddies. So I didn't have a childhood. And when I, I did have like time off, I would ride my horse, which is a solitary thing. And I loved that, getting away from everyone, all kind of supervision. I, I was so supervised by my parents, by the studio. I was like under scrutiny the entire time, but when I got on my horse, I could be anyone, anything, and soar. I don't think I became rebellious uh, until I left home and knew that I could like take off my jeans and throw them on the floor if I felt like it. <laughs> Nobody was gonna give me a hole for it. Right. And it was like, Wow, that felt good. <laughs> but then, I mean, in real rebellion as a human being, uh, rebellion about society and things that, that mattered, uh, I had a sense of outrage, I guess, um, against inequities all my life. Now, what, what, what is it that draws people to movie stars, do you think? Because for me, I came in kind of when the things that I dreamt about were kind of over, like the big, you know, the big uh, movie openings where you had people in limousines and the diamonds and the dresses. What is it that possesses people in Peoria to want to know every intimate detail of everything you do? I have no idea, <laughs> because to me, it's really boring. It's a job, and uh, I don't understand the fascination of someone famous, but I wouldn't go up to. I mean, I love and respect and admire you, but if I didn't know you, I wouldn't go up to you and ask you for your autograph, mm. because I'm a private person and I respect other people's privacy. The fact that you and I are famous makes us, in a way, untouchable, people think. We're not, but people assume that we are. Yeah. And they put us there. We didn't put ourselves there. Where does the reserve come from when you have to gather yourself up from tragedy after tragedy after tragedy? You have not had, like, the easiest life. Like uh, when I was in the hospital a year and a half ago, and they told me I was dying, and I had to go on a life support machine. I lay there and thought, there must be a reason for this. There must be some message. I must be learning something from this experience. Things just don't happen for no reason. 
But what is it? How will I be a better person? And I think that's what it's all about, learning from tragedy. Because if you don't have pain, you don't know what joy is. Mm. And it's made me relish the moments of joy and appreciate like good health that much more, appreciate happiness that much more. Good night and see you tomorrow. Ah, good night. I won't see you tomorrow. You might, you could come back. <laughs> okay. Can Elizabeth come back tomorrow? <laughs>